Hi everybody, this is Kimberly from Starfish Design Embroidery Group. I'm not going to show you my picture right now because I'm a hot mess, but also I don't want to mess with the tripod. I think I have this set up so you guys can see almost everything. I've had such trouble um, getting the right videos and everything so you guys can see everything on this bag and it's driving me insane. I've done one YouTube video and I've done a Facebook Live and still people are not saying Get, things are getting cut off. So what are we stitching today? We are stitching the double zipper clutch. I can see that. I can see you guys. Um, this has got a little hack. Somebody emailed me on Etsy and asked if they could um, put a clear vinyl here. Um, you can, but see the problem is uh, there is no pocket for you to access this in the um, in the pattern as it is. Oh, there's some... So cut, tear away to cut away in there because what happens is um the pocket is sewn into this zipper so i created a little hack and made a little slip pocket in here and made it so that this was um only accessing this panel the zipper and so you can still access the back main zipper and then you have this little panel that you can slide your driver's license or your work ID or whatever you want. This is the five or the seven by five. It's the horizontal version for the five by seven hoop. I um I will write up and add to the um PDF um an addendum on how I did this. So this is actually a little wide. Um so it's cutting off part of the ID. But if this was not this wide, I think you'd be able to access this. But you need some trim on here because you don't want to see the zipper tape. So I had made this one inch wide. So what I'll do is I'll recommend that you do like three quarters of an inch. So you get a little bit more room in there. It can get pushed down a little bit more in it. And so then what happens is you're basically doubling the bag. And I'll show you when we um, do the um, video. So I'm gonna try one more time to do this video. I'm in the process of redoing the PDF. So I may stop and, oh, I'm not gonna take any pictures. I think the pictures in the, PDF are fine. It's just I've gotten a lot better with my digitizing and my PDFs since I created this pattern. And you'll see there's lots of going back and forth and I hate that and I, I eliminate that in all my bags. So um, I'm not going to do new pictures for it. I'm just going to rewrite it so um, to clear up some of the areas that seem to cause the most confusion. So this is the top version. So there's two Methods. I'm not going to show how to do the other one because that's um, in the addendum. But for a single needle machine, I don't want to do the full top zipper. So um, on a multi-needle machine, you can do that. And I have pictures of that in the um, PDF. So this is what we're working. Um, I didn't, this was before I had fancy names for my patterns. <laughs> um, and so this one's got a nice, this would probably, I think this will fit a small um iphone not the plus obviously um i don't have mine sitting here my work phone is a regular one but i'm pretty sure it'll fit it and i made this um wrist strap i used um four inches by 14 inches and the instructions on how to make one of these is in my facebook group starfish designs embroidery group there's instructions on how to make a wrist strap you do need a sewing machine for that so today we are using this pretty um parlor paper vinyl um this one you see i used all cloth and i did use decor bond in it and you can see how it got a little bit wrinkly but i just wanted to give it a try so this i'm using vinyl and this stuff is really f nice um there's my d-rings i'm going to put two d-rings on this um this is the eight by eight but it does fit the 7.9 by 7.9 janome poop um i didn't have this when i did the pattern but that's what i made it um i just put eight by eight and it was tested on that. But a lot of people, when they see 8x8, eight eight, they think it's not going to fit for the Janome. So um, i am been starting to update my PDFs to um, specify that. This is going to be our interior lining for the main bag. These are our, um, our borders. So this is the exterior. So let me show, show you how it's going to work. You have a zipper here and a zipper there. This is the back. This is the pocket, the zipper pocket, the inside of that, the bottom zipper pocket. This is the panel that goes on the top. These are the two sides, and this is our focus fabric. Now, to make the focus fabric 
be more similar weight as my vinyl, I do put Decoville Light on the back. I just discovered this. I did this one in Decorbond to show you guys. You can get a nice feel with a Decorbond. Um, you can go ahead and press this again. I tried to let it cure really well, but that's just a habit. But if you press it, um, put your make your ironing board really hot and lay this on and hold it, it'll help with the wrinkles because Decoville Light is not available readily to everybody. There is a website, Got Interfacing, Barb, she does carry it, um, but I actually found it ha randomly on um, joanne.com, not in the store, and you want the light. The heavy is uh, totally different, but it really just adds a lot of body to it, and you wanna wait at least a half an hour. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Move this stuff out of our way. Hopefully I won't lose anything. I'm famous for losing the D-ring strap connectors. So I'm using, um, on both of these bags, I used the zipper tape from camsnaps.com. I love this stuff. I love it, love it. I've bought some on Amazon from like China. I've bought some from some of the more reputable, <laughs> meaning you pay a lot of money for it on sites. And I have to say, this has probably been the best quality to that I found. It's a nice solid zipper tape. It doesn't fray too much on here. And you could iron or light that on fire to stop it. But um, I don't actually know where my lighter is at. I'm terrible at losing stuff. I swore I was going to get more organized. So anyway, so what I like to do, and I use a lot of tape. I'm a taper. I have three or two tapes that I use. This is um, Embroidery Perfection. I find that on the web internet. Um, and your quilt shops will have it. And this is 3M Transport Medical Tape. I have one inch and half inch. Um, the one, the medical tape is not as good. None of them are really good to be used on um, shiny vinyls. Um, if you have to hold down shiny vinyl, make sure you put that in um, the side that's not going to get um, seen. So like in the seam allowance because it can leave a residue. So what I like to do, if you're new to my channel is I like to do what's called walking my zipper. Now this, my tension was off when I was running this stuff. So um, my seams are gobbledygook, but that's okay. I'm only using this line primarily. So I get a, a general starting spot at the end and tape it down. I'm gonna do that for both of these. And you'll see I labeled these A and B. I think that's one of the confusing things. So I'm actually gonna update that in the PDF um, as to which zipper I'm talking about. That is definitely, one of the most confusing things people have is which zipper that I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna get these started here and tape it down. And then I'm gonna grab my half inch tape and I'm gonna walk the zipper along that middle line. I always use three lines, um, but the benefit is not all zippers are exactly one inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come along and roll the zipper down. And so the center line is aligned with that center line. And not all zippers are as obvious about that. Um, and it's clear where the center is, but these are. So that's when, you know, how trying to center it otherwise works. But this is just the way I do my bags. I, I'm not speaking to anybody else's plan. I always recommend when you're doing a bag from a new digitizer, you you need to go into that bag as if you've never embroidered before because we all do things differently. And if you, I'm not gonna tell you how many emails and how many problems I've worked where the reason why the person messed up is because they did not follow my PDF they were doing it like they thought it should be done based on another person's um, design. I'm not into other people. I can't speak to how other people do their designs. Um, I try to design everything I do as if I was sewing it. So most of my techniques follow the same techniques as if I was actually sewing it. So I've taped that down. The one thing I like about the transport tape is the, seam, the needle will go right through it and it doesn't get hung up. So again, over here, I'm gonna go ahead and start taping it down. I found if I do the right side first, then go to the left side, I get a nicer finish. Because if you don't tape this down really well, at this point, 
you are going to have um, a wrinkly zipper. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Um, I've made some mistakes and some of my earlier bags had lots of wrinkly zippers because I didn't tape it down very well. I also didn't used to do a, a, a basting stitch on the zipper. And I've learned really well to do that now on my, on my designs, I mean. And actually, to be honest, when I'm sewing, I actually do a basting stitch because I just, it works better for me. And you can see this, this zipper tape is actually not perfectly one inch. It's weird. Some of the colors are and some are not. So it's a good thing I'm then doing it like this. And I was not perfect with lining up my other zippers. And I'll show you what, what I mean by that in a second. On the last one I just did. It's obvious. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here. Ignore that that looking gobbly looking stabilizer. That's where it came out, so it's not even there anyway. And then I'm going to put another piece of tape here. So what I mean, and let me give you a close-up. Now those zippers look pretty good to me. But what I mean is if you don't um if you don't get this nice and secure, this is gonna be like kind of like rolling. It'll be wrinkly a little bit. I did a good job on this one, so I can't show it to you. But what I didn't do is see how the reveal, now this actually might be my design, but I don't think it is because this one is okay. But up here, my reveal is off. But I think I may have digitized it that way for a reason because of the construction in the bag. Okay, so now those zippers are all done. You'll also notice now on this hoop, there's only one direction, so I don't need to worry about it. But if you're using a multi-needle, it's easy to get confused as to what's the top and the bottom. So write the top and the bottom on your stabilizer. I also marked down here my main lining hem, and this is my front pocket hem. So these are two different areas that you're gonna have to pay attention to. So I'm gonna go ahead and I apologize in advance for the going back and forth on the, um, I'm gonna actually tape that down, I forgot to do that. On the um, stitch lines, oh my gosh, Kimberly, I've really learned better since then. I need to um, stop this because I forgot, you don't want these ring, these um, poles dingling around like that because they might fall into your stitch area. So make sure you go ahead and tape those up and out of the way. I use the thicker tape for that. All right. I discovered another application I actually bought and it allows me to stop and pause the video, but um, see how close this one's getting? Now I gotta watch this because, yep, right there. My Janome, in order to do those cutoffs, it goes back and forth the hoop to pull that tail. So I have to be very careful else it will hit my hardware. So you'll see me do this all the time. And if you've watched my channel before, I apologize for, you know, regurgitating this information to you again. <laughs> but what I do is I reach back here and there's a secondary lift. You see that? And I can pull it up so I can be assured it's not gonna get stuck on any of my hardware. Okay, so we got that all stitched down. We can remove our tape now. Um, this is tearaway that I'm using here, 806 Pellon, because I needed it for the hoop size. Um, this one seems to be tearing away. I was using some different, um, oh, I said tearaway, I meant cutaway. No, tearaway, yeah, tearaway, sorry. I was using some different one on that last bag and it was, the paper was coming up really badly. So pull it um, carefully because I just pulled some of those stitches out. So but this is just a hold down stitch, so it's okay. And then I'll go ahead and remove it from the top as well. I go through a lot of tape. Yes, I should buy stock in 3M. Sometimes it comes off really easily and other times it doesn't. But I'm gonna leave the tape on the right hand side. Um, I hope I make it through this bag because my machine is looking like it's having some tension issues and it's overdue for being oiled. So I think that's what the issue is, I need to oil it. So, 
and I'm gonna leave those um, pieces there at the end. And you can see, this is a time to stop and look that for the most part, my lines stitched out nice and even. If they didn't, because I didn't get the zipper down right, now's the time to go ahead and fix it. So let me get the PDF up so I can make sure I'm following along. I just did it, but um, I, I need to make sure I don't confuse myself. And I'm gonna label the um, pieces because it's um, apparently not clear. There's a lot of pieces, so um, when I'm describing what they different, what the different ones, different ones are. So the first thing we're gonna work on is our front zipper. So we need our front zipper lining, and I'm gonna rename this in the PDF. But if you're looking right now, um, that is called in the current PDF. It's called the center panel pocket. And we're gonna need our center panel, which is our focus fabric. It doesn't have to be a focus fabric. You can make this all the same in vinyl or whatever you want. So we're gonna take one of these and we're gonna flip our hoop over and we're gonna line up our long edge with the bottom zipper B. So with bottom of zipper B and just center your material over that. And then you wanna tape it in place. Sometimes you can reuse this tape. Um, this stabilizer is not letting me do that. One more thing is uh, if you're working with, um, your hoop configuration is different than mine, you might need to roll this fabric out of your way. Usually not with the small pocket, but with the bigger lining, that might be an issue for you. Um, so then we need our focus fabric. Okay. So what we're doing is we're building the front panel of our purse and then the pocket right here. So that pocket is going to get stitched down and then folded down so that the inside, you see it has the wrong side down, it's going to get stitched down so the inside is facing you. So when you look in your pocket, you have the pretty fabric. Now, what I did with my Decoville light is I measured, I made sure that it was three-eighths of an inch away from, it's about a quarter inch to three-eighths of an inch, so that when I, when I tack this down, and then I push it back, I'm not gonna have that Decoville light in my seam allowance. Okay, so I'm gonna center this down and tape it down. Wrong side should be facing you. So you want the pretty side down right now. I learned that pretty side word. I've always learned the right and wrong side of material, of fabric, but uh, Crafty Gemini, who I've followed for way longer than she's even had YouTube, I may have been one of her first subscribers on YouTube. Um, she always says pretty side, so I picked up that from her. Okay, so now we're gonna run step three, which is gonna tack down that, um, those two pieces of material. Okay, and see, this is what I've improved upon. I hate when it goes all the way across the hoop like that. Okay, now we're gonna go to the back. So this is the back of your hoop. And we're gonna lightly finger press this along the seam, and then we're gonna pull it as tautly as we can so we have a nice, clean pocket. And retape it. Okay. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the front. And you see I had that Decoville in there. It's already fallen over for me to help me. So we're gonna go ahead and finger crease this. Make sure you do a good job here so that your your zipper reveal line is equal. Um, do I have that bag sitting here? I do, I think. Hold on and I'll show you what happens if you don't do a very good job there. If you don't do a really good job of folding that down when it does the top stitch, your vinyl will not be even. Do you see how over here, I pulled it down really well, but over here I didn't pull it very well. And you can see that the top stitching, it looks off. And then look at, you have this little bit of extra flap here. So make sure it's pulled tautly and you can finger crease. Or if you have one of those little boning tools, um, I don't know where mine went, you can use that. And that's actually gonna be very really painful when I go to do the, um, top stitching up there. Okay, now we're going to run the top stitching. This is another area I've improved upon. 
when I first started doing it, I was doing two and a half inches just because I get, you get used to stitching two and a half inches all everything. But since I try to learn everything from bag making, I come to realize that in bag making, um, we don't do two and a half inches. We do three and a half inches on vinyl because the stitches can start to um, get too tight and, and then it doesn't look nice. But now you see, check the back and make sure everything looks good on it before you continue. If this had come loose, you can you have time to fix it right now. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and open up our zipper. This is um, an area that's really, really important to pay attention to. You're gonna move your zipper about um, um, three quarters of the way over there for right now. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this tape, see where the stitching ends? We wanna line the tape up here. What that's going to do is hold our um, zipper together. And what we're going to do now is back tack here and then back tack over here. So when it's done back tacking here, I'm going to move my zipper back um, over. Well, I can do it now. And so it can back tack over here. We're basically creating um, the closure for the zipper that we've cut off. In this case, I'm using zipper tape, so I don't have one. So I want to make sure I don't hit that. And now I don't have to use the tape over here because this zipper hasn't been opened. It's still closed. So it's already closed. So we don't need to um, use the tape to hold it together. And again, I would digitize this differently today. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and um, put our lining. So we folded up our lining and if um you're seeing this and you don't understand why i goofed up um i edited the video i may have figured it out i should have had my lining the other direction so um it should have folded up to right here but we're just going to go with it this is going to be where we turn our bag so i'm going to have a smaller pocket so we need a hem on the bottom and i should have already had this panel on the top when we did the um placement for the the this basting for the zippers to put the stops on the zipper so it would have been caught so I'm going to tape this down really well at the top here and then I'm going to fold under up the hem and then this is going to get caught in our side panels so we want to go ahead and I'm just doing this wrong since I laid the first one wrong I'm gonna lay this one wrong. So I need to fold this hem up a little bit more. We're just gonna have a little bit shallow of a pocket so that I can lay this one and hem it up the same amount. Make sure it's even on both sides. And so your hem should come to, where'd my pen go? Okay, yours is gonna to come to right here to this pocket line. You're gonna fold up and have your hem meet right there. Mine is off because I, like I said, I put my fa fabric the wrong way. So this is what the hem looks like. And I'm doing a really shallow hem here. Okay, and then tape that down on both sides. I'm gonna use the thicker tape until it gets caught in the seams. Okay, so again, we have our first lining and actually before we do this this is a good time if you're using um tear or cutaway stabilizer go ahead and cut out the stitching here if you're using cutaway i'm sorry it's tear away just now's a good time to put a slit down the middle of your zipper don't cut your zipper just to make it easier to open this up later do not cut it out yet unless you're using cutaway because you need that stability. Okay, back to here. And you didn't have to do that. You could have done it later from the front, but it was open right now, so now is a good time because this is going to be enclosed. Okay, one more time. So your fold line, you're going to fold under until you reach this line and fold on top until you reach this line. And mine is just off because I put my pieces down the wrong direction. 
and I would have known that if I would have paid attention to this when I put that first piece down. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and run our placement line, step seven, for our left panel. Okay, and again, I'm so sorry about all these presser foots going crazy, the hoops going up and down like this. I've gotten better. <laughs> in my digitizing and I don't do that so much anymore because it kind of drives me crazy. Okay, so we're gonna lay our, um, now see that will have caught our pocket in the back. Now we're gonna lay our vinyl so that it's face down with the long edge right on top of that line and then the top right here at the top of the zipper and then tape that down. And now we're gonna run the tack down. Make sure your bottom hasn't dislodged itself. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and open it up. So move that tape off. And remember when you're doing this, you don't wanna um, pull it open too hard because you could pull your stitches. You don't wanna see your stitches when you do this. So you just wanna kind of pull it back here and finger press it right along there. And you can use your boning tool if you have one. And just press it and then tape it and hold it in place. If you're just watching this and you didn't see all my boo-boos, you see the tape on the back or the thread on the back because I messed this up and had to restart it. Forgot to add the second panel to the back. Okay, make sure we haven't messed that up on the back. It's still looking good. Now I'm gonna run our top stitch. And when it runs the top stitch, it's gonna go ahead and, you see how it wants to pull here? I'm gonna put another piece of tape over here. When it does that, your seam allowance or your top stitching is not gonna look as good. So I'm gonna tape it down to make sure it's not pulling. And it's gonna do a little carry stitch here and then come around to the top to run the placement line for the right side. And we wanna keep checking to make sure nothing on the bottom has dislodged itself until it's situated. And once the placement line runs, then the lining will be secured on the back for the little pocket in the front. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure nothing dislodged before I run that. It looks good still, so I'm gonna go ahead and run that placement line, which is gonna secure that pocket. And like I was saying before, I. I would digitize this differently today if I was doing it. I wish Etsy would let you upload easily, update your files, but they don't. And too many people have bought this, so I can't just email every person. Okay, so now you see our back is secured. And we can go ahead and trim this extra because since I put my pocket wrong, it's going to be in the seam allowance. Um, no, it won't. But you won't need to do that because you won't put your pack the wrong direction. Okay, so now we're gonna put this panel right side down so the top meets the zipper, top of the zipper tape, and the bottom meets, um, or the side is totally parallel with the um, placement line. You can move this other tape out of your way as, as you get to it, okay? Okay, while it's doing this, let me check the instructions to make sure I'm doing everything right. Yeah, this girl definitely needs oiled. Okay, now we're gonna fold this open. Remove the tape. And fold it open, and again, we're gonna press it. Make sure you keep your hoop against something firm when you're doing this pressing so that you don't unhoop it. 
and then we're going to tape it down and hold it securely while it does the top stitching. Ah, I'm making gobbledygook of my tape. Put all this tape over here. And we can remove the tape here too. You want to remove it as you go along because some of this tape will leave residue on some vinyls. Okay, now we're going to do our top stitching. Try to keep your finger away from that needle. going to come over here and do a, a travel line I believe to go up to um, the placement for the d-ring that's all it's doing okay or I'm sorry not the d-ring yet it's just just doing a travel I try to put some travels in there so that you wouldn't have these worries about hitting that zipper oh okay so now you'll see that if you were to reach in between your pocket here, you should be, and our pocket's really tight. Oh, this is gonna be really hard to turn, Kimberly. But you should be able to see, reach your fingers in there. That's correct. Oh, this is gonna be so hard to turn. I am gonna trim this extra material. Wow, this is pockets, I think as small now as the Oh no, this is the this size pocket is right. I don't know if I did this one. Somebody did this pattern or this size, but I don't remember who. But yeah, this one's gonna be hard to turn. So I'm gonna trim out this extra material just because I can. I don't know if that's gonna make turning my pocket harder. It may not, but I'm feeling like it might, so that's why I'm turning cutting it away now. Again, you won't need to do this because I messed up and put my material the wrong direction. Okay, so now we're ready to do um, this top band here. I'm gonna trim out all these little tails. We want our zipper pull to be on the right-hand side, which it is. We've already cut our slit. Um, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna do a partial stitch. We're going to, this is the stabilizer underneath. We're gonna stitch Start stitching across here, and then you're gonna hit stop and move your zipper pull. Now, if you have seen my newer bags, like in the last couple months, it's January 11th today, you'll know that I've now started digitizing those steps so that I force a color stop so you can move the zipper because I always worry that somebody's not gonna hit stop in time, and then they're gonna hit the zipper pull and break their needle and hurt their machine. So, I've digitized it now. So go ahead and center this over your um, material or your, I'm sorry, your um, pan, your project, your hoop. And always make sure if, um, especially a hoop this big, see where the beginning of my seam, my seam's never gonna be beyond this. So you line that up and eyeball that, make sure it's there. And I cut it loose over here, but you can see over here. Because I'm not about putting all these additional placement stitches. It's such a waste of thread and everything, and it ends up putting bulk into the seams. Okay, so it's getting halfway through. All right, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna reach up. If you have to pull your hoop off, do it. I didn't need to. I reach in and move my zipper pole over to the left. Make sure this stays taped down and then continue. And we're gonna do the same thing when we do our top stitching. That's gonna go back over to the other side, I'm sorry. So I gotta lift up my foot. I don't want to risk hitting that. Sorry about that again. Don't hold that against me. I've gotten better. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and fold this up. And again, make sure when you're pressing um, that you have this against a firm surface. 
because if you don't, you're going to pull your your project right out of the hoop. That stabilizer is going to push out, and then all that work you just did is going to be down the drain or in the trash bin. Okay? And again, don't pull too hard. So I'm going to put a few pieces of tape because this really wants to come up. And I've moved my zipper pull back over to the right-hand side because we're going to start on the left. Now, at this step, you may not need to stop your machine because your presser foot may have enough room to get by, but um, you just play that by ear. I'm also going to go ahead and take the time to put and tape this down onto the cotton just so it doesn't jingle around on me. Um, I think I'm going to be able to bypass it, so I think I can just leave it that way. So you're going to get halfway across, you're going to hit stop, you're going to move your zipper pull over, and then you're going to start again. But my presser foot will get past it. Your presser foot, like on my old Genomi 350, it wouldn't have. Okay. All right, now we're going to go ahead and uh, let me double check my instructions. I believe we are going to do our, yes, we're going to add our lining to the back. So this is the next area that causes so much confusion for people. Let me make sure I'm at the right step. So we just ran a top stitch, so we're up to 14. So we just finished 13, okay? And then we're going to um, pull this front down again, and then we're gonna lay the lining for the main bag. So the reason we're gonna pull this down is we don't want, we need to secure the bottom of our lining so that we can top stitch it and we don't want that to go through this vinyl. Okay, so there's where we're at right now. So we fold this down and tape it out of the way. Turn to the back of your hoop. Now we're gonna go back to zipper A. Where's my lining? Okay, I've switched to a different color lining. Okay, so this is where you might need to um, work on fabric management. So, we're gonna line up this end, the short end of our long piece of lining. I'm gonna center it over the bottom. This is zipper A, the bottom of zipper A. And then we're gonna tape it in place. And then I'm gonna roll this extra up just because I don't, it's very heavy. This is a long piece and I don't want it to make this come loose. And what I normally might do is roll it up and then um, tape it to the top of the hoop. Okay, so we have that all lined up there. So this is a long piece. So the excess goes over the top of your hoop. So figure that out. So now I can hold it and now I'm gonna push it out of the way. And I'm gonna reline this up. Oops, and it's the tape is grabbing on me. See, you always have to make sure. Sometimes that happens. I did secure it down there good enough. So let me put that down again. Okay, again, control this extra material. You wanna make sure that you don't get any pleats. So you need to make sure this is really coming out of here. Now we're gonna run the tack down for that material, the lining, as well as it serves as where we're gonna line this up for its final seam. Okay, so now we've ran that tack down there and you see on the back, that's now secure. So now we're gonna remove the tape and don't worry about covering this up. Do you not worry about that. We're gonna, it's not gonna get covered up when it's finally done. 
Now we're going to fold this down. And again, if you need to fold it up to keep to manage it, and we're going to finger press along this very lightly because we have our hoop upside down. We do not want to have that come undone. And right now you can just leave it down like this for right now. Okay, now this is the tricky part. You see that placement line that we just ran from that zipper tack down of the lining. We need this vinyl folded a hem up under that placement line. So what I like to do is move this tape so I can reuse it. And if yours is too, too thick, you can go ahead and trim it down. But what I like to do first is I like to go ahead and fold the vinyl and finger press it right at that line, okay? Right at that line. Some of the vinyls are gonna do better at this than others. And if you cut everything square, it really helps. So I'm right at that line, I'm just touching that line. Now you see, it's kind of hard to see, but I think you can see I now have a crease in the vinyl. So now I can fold that vinyl under on that crease and I'm holding it in the air and I'm making sure that this is even there and finger crease it and then it's going to reach that line. So that's just an easy way to make sure it's going to reach. And then as you go along, make sure it's not too far past that line. And I can see right now that I'm not very even. Do you see that? I'm not even. So I'm going to rework it and make sure. And yes, it came loose on the bottom. So I'm going to have to readjust that and work it and make sure it stays down tight. So I'm going to put some tape along here. And I'm just looking underneath at that line. And I just want my vinyl to be right on top of that line that I just stitched. And this is the transport tape, so it can go through, the needle can go through that, no problem. All right, it looks good over here. And you want it to just be covering it because um, you don't want to really necessarily see that through the um, top stitching. Okay, now it's down nice and secured. I didn't have to trim any of mine away. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over, I'm gonna pull this hoop up this extra so I can make sure it's straight. Remount it on your frame and then this is gonna run the top stitching. Okay, you see that? One more time, let me show you. So we make sure the back is folded down and taped and then this has been folded under to create a hem and I've taped it really well and it's just meeting that line that we just stitched. So this is serving two purposes. It's tacking down the front lining for the front vinyl and then the back lining. This is a really, I should have um, used a longer zipper tape to see how close it got to it. I'm gonna stop for one second because I wanna make sure this is not coming loose. It looks good, okay. So that was step 15. So now we're going to um, run um, the placement for the D-ring. So there's um, two positions. There's a placement um, number 16. And again, I do this differently on my newer files. So let's first of all, let's make sure that the back is good. It's good. You can just leave that down for right now. Um, let me get rid of this extra material here. So um, there's two positions. So 16 is for this one. Um, so that's 16 and um, let's see, 17. And then 18 and 19 are for the top placement. I want mine on the top because I'm doing a crossbody. So again, I do this differently now. Now I would just have that all be one stitch, all of them regardless. So if you are not doing the side um, D-ring placement, you can go ahead and skip ahead to steps um, 18 and 19.
but if you want it on the side, you want to do 16 and 17. And the nature of, I'm showing you how to do this, I'm going to run both of them. And be very careful because I can see this transfer tape actually is liking to stick to this um, parlor paper rhino. It's not coming off quite as nicely. Okay. So our zipper is still over here. So um, it's going to get really close to that zipper pull in this um, because I didn't leave extra um, zipper. zipper. So you run 16. All right, put your D ring there, tape it down, and then run 17. I'm actually going to skip to 18 now. Okay, so now we're going to run 18. is positioning two positions for the D-rings. And again, it's going all the way back. I've gotten better, guys. I really have. Okay, I need to trim away some of this extra zipper, or this thread up here. Okay, uh, something is sticking on the bottom. Okay, this tape can go, this tape can go. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm off camera. I was just, the tape came loose on the bottom. Okay, so now I have a, a, a placement line here and here. And it's really hard to see because I'm using the same thread color. But you can see it when you're up close. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over like this because this is how I like to do it. And I'm going to get my D-ring placement. There, I seem to have lost. There they are. I'm using cloth just because they match the front panel. Okay, I think you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and lay my um, placement right here's the beginning of it. I'm going to lay it down and I like to position it so that the um, top of the D-ring, the hardware, is right on that top stitching line. So... So right here is my line for my D-ring. And I'm going to position this like that and so that my top of my D-ring is in line with the um, top stitching. Now, the caveat to this is you need to make sure that your presser foot can get past the hardware. And that's why I do mine because I know it from experience that's about where my um, presser foot is, the width of my presser foot. But if your presser foot is wider than that, you need room for the presser foot to get through here and that, not hit that D-ring. So if your presser foot is wider than that, you may need to leave more room in between them. Now, I like to go ahead and leave, if you haven't watched my videos before, I call it a bridge of material of tape so that my presser foot has something to glide against when it's coming across this bump of material. So I cut the material or the tape wider so that there's like a little bridge so my presser foot can go right over that and it won't get stuck. So let me pull this lining down, make sure it's not on. Like again, you can roll yours up and keep it out of the way. And now we're going to put this back on and we're going to tack down. Step 19 is going to tack down those D-ring connectors. And I'm going to keep an eye out and make sure it doesn't hit my D-ring. And it, see, it would have hit my D-ring. All right. Off my tack down, I didn't position that one well, but that's okay. It'll get caught down all, all together in the end. All right, so we're getting to the bottom four. We're up to step 20. We are not going to run step 25. Step 25 is there solely for the purpose of making sure the presser foot does not come back to the center of our project. And what would it get stuck on? It would get stuck on this little guy right here. 
Okay, I think we're okay with him. Um, we'll untape him. I think actually we're done with him. We can untape him now. Okay, so before we go any farther, we need to go ahead and um, let me turn the back, make sure I'm following the instructions right. We're going to tack down our exterior um, on the top. So the first step, we're going to keep the lining down out of the way. So we're going to leave the lining down here, leave your zipper alone, and we're going to put our, our exterior right here along the top of the, um, the zipper. Now, I'm doing a square here, but make sure you use it, put it in the right direction, and don't pull a Kimberly on that lining. So if you have to turn to the side, go ahead and do that. Tape it down really well so that it doesn't um, come loose. And it, again, it's just with the top of the zipper. So this is gonna tack down this vinyl to the top. And then we're gonna turn over and we're gonna do the lining. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. We're almost there, guys. We really are. Make sure this stays straight down here. Um, really tight there with that zipper tape. Let me see if I can get pull my zipper out a little bit more. I made it really too short. I should have made it just a little bit longer. I don't want to pull it off my zipper tape, though. I did that one time. Ooh, that was not good. It was really hard to pull it in here. Uh, I don't have very much room in here. I can pull it just a tiny bit. So you'll be using, um, your zippers will be like an inch wider on either side, so you won't have this issue. But I cut my zipper tape just a little too short there. Okay, I'm gonna start again. Now I think we're good. So make sure if you're using zipper tape that you give it an extra inch on either end. And you see it went over there. Oh, I should also add, this is the time to move up to a 9014 needle if you haven't already. I'm already using a 9014 needle because you're going through a lot of layers here and a regular embroidery needle just doesn't have enough strength in it to go through all these layers. Remember, these machines were not made to be sewing vinyl bags. You know, we're asking it to do stuff that it's not really meant to do. So you need to help it along, and it can do it, but you need to help it along by giving it a good needle. And a 9014 needle is going to do you really good. So you want to make sure when you're doing um, your embroidery that you go back to your 75, your scene or 7511, whatever you use for your embroidery. Um, okay, so now here's the tricky part that everybody gets confused on. And this lining is really, really long. So we're going to roll that lining up. And we want to come down here to our main bag lining that we wrote on the front. And you're going to take and put the fold of your um, interior lining just so it's right above that line right above it and then make sure it's lined up even both sides and do a light finger press because we're upside down here and we don't want our project to come on hooped then you're going to go ahead and roll that up and this is a departure from the old pdf and the old pdf i have you go ahead and um fold this down and that's what's confusing people folding that hem for the top don't need to do it right now let's just go ahead and tape this down and you're gonna have that little bit hanging over the top. So this is the important part. You want this fold to be right above that line. And you can tape that down too as you, if you, as you need. Now we're gonna to come to the top and we are doing this single needle way, which means we're just gonna um, do our top stitching and we're not gonna cut this separate from our um, stabilizer. We're gonna fold this, oh, I, I missed some of my top stitch or my tack down got missed over here. Uh, came out when I pulled the tape out. That's okay. I'm just going to fold it down. Make sure it's even. Okay, so, and I have some tape there. I can pull that tape out too. Make sure you pull the tape out as you go along. 
Okay, so you wanna finger press this just like we've been doing or use your pressing tool, but make sure you're against a firm surface when you do it. And you wanna pull it as much as you can and then tape it where you can. And it's gonna be resistant to doing the taping because it's vinyl. So again, I find I, I actually have better luck with my fingernails. I gotta tuck this one down here because the tack down came loose. Okay, right, I'm gonna put the tape there. And just finger press it and then it's gonna come along and top stitch around here. So make sure your bottom lining, you should be able to see that above there. And if you have to pause it as you're going across to help hold it, or what's really helpful is if you use some kind of um, plastic um, guide, uh, the purple thing or something to help guide this and make sure it stays back when you're doing the, the top stitching. Okay, did you see that? All right, we're gonna go ahead and top stitch. And I know you can't see all the extreme to my machine over here, but that's okay. stuck there it's just going to do a carry stitch to take you over to the um, bottom so I'm just going to go ahead and stitch through past that carry stitch okay so that looks good to me now again this would be a time that you could go ahead and pull that out and redo it if it didn't look clean to you uh, be careful doing it with vinyl because you might get holes that don't go away but I'm going to go ahead and trim uh, these little jump strings real quick. Get that out of there. All right. So now go to your back. And now you have this extra material. So I'm going to trim it down to about uh, half an inch. And now fold this down so it'll be folded into a hem as you um, do the final steps. This is what confused people is this part. So just leave it up and then fold it down. So now I'm gonna fold it down. I'm almost to the end, so I'm being very careful. I don't want this to come unhooped. Finger press it if you need to, and then tape those little edges down so they don't come loose when we do the side, steam, side seams. All right, now this should not get caught in the front seam because we made sure it was above that line. But just to be safe, I'm gonna roll it up and tape it just to be safe. Okay, so that's out of the way. We're gonna stitch our bottom line now. So what we're gonna do is open up our zipper and move that zipper pull over carefully because I didn't leave enough tape. You have to lift up your D-ring when you do that. So move that D-ring out of the way. Oh, why didn't I use rainbow D-rings? Oh, silly, Kimberly. Okay, I got the rainbow D-rings from New Moon. This zipper is from Cam Snaps. So we just need that open. Uh, you can take it all the way up to this D-ring if you want. Okay. And um, we forgot to, I forgot to cut the zipper open here. So carefully reach in there and cut that cutaway or tear away open. If you're using cutaway, you should have done that already. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you to do that. So if you're using cutaway, it's better to do this step um, before you take the lining up, the last step. So um, I don't like using this cutaway, this tearaway, because I can't, <laughs> can't see if I'm doing it. But I got a little sliver in there. You only need a little sliver, because when you turn it um, the right way out, you'll be able to easily tear it with your fingers. So you just need to open a little sliver. It means tear away, it's easy to get away. This is a nice bag that you can use tear away on. There we go, I got a nice sliver. Okay, so now we're gonna, this one's open. This 
this, make sure this is open because this is where we're gonna turn the bag. Okay, make sure the bottom, it came loose. That's okay, it's out of my way. Okay, we're gonna, um, we're not doing the, the multi-needle version where we cut this away from the top. So we're just gonna pull this down as tautly as we can. Do you see how it's stitched? Since we did the top stitching, you have this little pleat up here now. So we wanna pull that down to the bottom as tautly as we can, but without pulling out our stitches. And you'll need a few pieces of tape to hold this down. So I do the center first. So I pull it as tautly as I can, and then I tape that center. And then I do the sides. And again, you might be able to reuse some of this other tape that's already here. I'm just using fresh tape because I don't want this to come loose. So now it's gonna do, it's gonna come down here while we're already at the bottom and it's gonna stitch this bottom seam, the exteriors to the front. Again, this is out of the way on the back. And we're almost done, guys. This took almost all the food. And I am gonna add like a half an inch to everything on the PDF. This was, um, if you had pulled it down, it would be a much wider seam allowance left. And again, it's doing a carry stitch to take you over to the front. I'm not gonna run that step. I'm gonna go ahead and finger point through. Okay, so now we're up to 23. So now is the time you can go ahead and unfold this on the back. Unfold this on the back. And go ahead and tape down the corners so they don't come loose. Because we are now going to be, um, oh, this tape came on, got gobbly gooped. Let me redo that one. We're now gonna be doing the two side seams. So I broke them up into two steps. Um, again, I was new, relatively. I've gotten much better, but um, you just do them in the same colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the extra tape over here. Oh, I, how much tape have I used on this project? My son is probably really hungry. Tom will do pizza. So this is the second one of these I've done. I wanted to test the ID wallet idea out that somebody requested earlier. So if you guys get to this, it's January 11th. If you see this video because you are subscribed and watching my notifications, thank you very much. Hit that bell. Um, I have, um, Chloe is still on intro price right now. By the time I get this PDF done, I'm going to treat it like a new, uh, file and I'll give you guys an intro price and give her a sale for the double clutch, double zipper clutch. Okay, I'm just removing all this tape now. Okay, so again, make sure that's nice and secure on the back. Both sides are taped. We're going to run 23. It's going to do a little travel tack and then let's go up, go up to the top. So this is our way of avoiding hitting any hardware. All right. to say I was actually inspired to make this bag because um, there's a sewing bag called um, Devon that's really popular and I actually have a link for that um, 
in my PDF. I'll have it in this one, the updated one. It's in the YouTube um, description below. And it's, the pattern wasn't the best, but it was shown by um, one of the sewists I follow. And I basically figured out how to do it without even buying the pattern just because of sewists, but I felt obligated to buy the pattern um, just because to, to honor the designer and to give her that credit. So if you know how to sew, this bag is so much easier to do with her pattern than to do it in the hoop. But um, because I wanted it in lots of sizes and her pattern is for two sizes, I decided, I was like, you know, it's a challenge for me to see if I can figure out doing it in the hoop. So now you see our sides are nice and even. Do not unhoop your machine or your project until you've done that. So we have our top is secured. We have this is open so we can reach in and turn our bag. This should not be secured. If this is secured down, you did something wrong. All right, I'm going to pull all the tape off because it's nice and clean. And then it comes for the fun. So now on my machine, I want to move this out of the way. So I have a little option here. I can arrow down and hit that and it'll pull it down here out of the way. I think I could also just hit home, but either way. Okay, I'm taking all the tape off. All right, did I already take all the tape in the front? I think I did. All right, now we're ready to unhoop it. The beauty of this using um, tear away is that we don't have any material, any stabilizer stuck inside of our bag. That's why I did not use poly mesh. Now, um, I've started to use poly mesh for all my bags that where the stabilizer is going to stay inside the bag. But if it's not going to stay inside the bag, then I use tear away. And this is 804 from Pellon. Okay, so I have all that out. And then what you do is if you reach in here behind that pocket and you can pull out the extra tear away. Just work it out. There's two pieces, or I'm sorry, three pieces. There's one behind the main pocket, or the, I should call it the main pocket, one behind the zipper pocket, and then there's the two pieces on the side with the panels. So I pulled out the piece by the zipper pocket and then get the two pieces here by the panels. Because you don't want that crunchy stuff in your bag. So I'm just reaching in there and pulling it out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to trim down the seam allowance on the bag. All right, none of this was usable. I like to save scraps that are usable whenever possible. Oh, I didn't, why didn't I make a strap for this while I was up there? Okay, so do not cut this. Do not cut this. So we don't need to leave a notch for turning because we're gonna turn through that pocket. So just go to the bottom here, and it's best to not to do this by your sewing machine because you don't want crumbs getting in your sewing machine. So I'm gonna cut the bottom off first. Oh, I got really close to that seam. Oh, shoot, do not get that close. I got way too close. That's an eighth of an inch. You need to leave a quarter inch. So leave a quarter inch on the cloth, All right? And then we can go ahead and flip over here. I like to generally leave the um, zipper tape a little bit longer than the rest of it. But this time I left the zipper tape so small that there's not much to trim away. So I'm gonna just trim it even. So again, leave about a quarter of an inch. Do not cut the vinyl at the top because you risk cutting into your zipper tape. Your vinyl at the top should be aligned with the top of the zipper, so there shouldn't be anything extra there. Okay, now let me show you what I do with the corners. So I don't touch these corners up here, and I like to leave these D-rings a little bit long, and in fact, they actually ended up being perfect. I usually leave about a half an inch. So on the corners, I come in at an angle, then go across the corner, and then do another angle right here. And it helps reduce the bulk in the corners. And you get a little bit nicer. Now this one, remember I cut so much on the bottom, I'm not gonna trim any more on that bottom. That side was too close. Okay. So our our thing, our lining here is even. 
and we're ready to turn. So what we wanna do is reach up in here into that little pocket and we're gonna carefully pull the corner out. And I'm sorry, I this is a really tight one. Um, hemostats really help. Where'd my hemostats go? So if you get your hemostats, I love these rounded knob ones from Amazon, reach in through that pocket and just get one of your corners and secure it inside there and then they lock in place and then you can start pulling it through. So this kind of acts as like a third hand for you. So you can start getting that corner through the pocket. And it's a little bit harder to do because you're going inside that little pocket in there. But it's doable. I'm gonna actually, I don't know if I grabbed it right, so I'm gonna skip it. Oh, I did. It got, it got me that piece, that's what I needed. So now I got that piece so I can start pulling it through. And it's not the easiest because it's vinyl in there. So just keep working it. You see how I got a hold of the vinyl now? And then you can slowly start turning the pocket out and work the vinyl through that pocket. It's not easy. I'm not gonna tell you it is, especially when you're using vinyl. But you just take your time. Now, um, I know a lot of people like to go ahead and throw this in a hot iron or hot dryer for a few minutes and it takes um it makes the vinyl more pliable but this parlor paper vinyl is pretty good in my experience um so you see i've already got to the zipper part so just keep working it it just takes a couple minutes if this is not the bag that you want to do if you have arthritis um it's not I mean, you can do it, but you just need to get somebody to help you turn it. So just go slow. And if you do pull some of the stitches out of your um, pocket, it's not the end of the world because you can fix it. Just a little bit of glue basting, or you can use um, some hem tape or whatever. Okay, so now you see that pink is coming through. That's our inside pocket lining. So that means we're getting through. So... It's gonna come all the way through there. This is one of the harder bags. <laughs> Why did I pick this one? I should have looked at the size of the pocket first. But it's totally doable. The, um, the hardest one is the five by seven vertical. Oh, actually, didn't I do that one on, I might've done that one on the video that's on YouTube now. It was, wow, that one was so hard to turn. I had to like just keep going off camera because I was at my six needle machine and I really couldn't sit in front of that like this. You can't get up underneath it. So it was really hard to show. And oh, that was so hard to turn. But you see it's coming. Slowly but surely it's coming. I really love this little clutch and I know it's not the most popular selling and you guys get lucky because um I've gotten my prices have gone up a little as I've gotten better and more difficult bags but um I realized this one's was marked I don't know if I should raise the price to match the others or not funny story after I released this I was so excited I worked so I did so many revisions of this and I'm, you know, I remember I was a new digitizer and I did so many revisions. I think I have like five or six versions of it and three or four of them went straight in the trash. I finally got it right. I finally got it acceptable. I was so excited, but I was still really new and not very many people knew me. So it wasn't really selling that well. And it wasn't like maybe an hour after I listed it on Etsy and some designer, we won't mention her name, sends me a message on Etsy and says, uh, yeah, you copied my design. I'm like, what? And I'm like, I know I didn't copy your design because this was a inspired by a sewn pattern. How would I copy your design? Not that you can copy it because people just don't understand copyright. Copyright means if I, if somebody takes my file and sells it on Etsy with my PDF and my file, or just my file, 
with um, revisions or not, if they take my file and change it or just sell it in whole on Etsy, that's a copyright violation. But if you make something that looks like somebody else's, that's not a copyright violation. Anyway, so I'm like, what bag are you talking about? Because I, at that point, I had a couple. I have the, um, the exposed zipper, lace zipper, double zipper bag. And she's like, I don't know. And then she, she goes and she comes back a little bit later and she says, this one and pointing to this one. And I was like, I did not copy you. I said, this bag was inspired by a sewing bag. And anyway, long story short, it's really, it, this kind of stuff happens a lot. Okay, now I've reached through the top zipper and so it's tearing away that tear away that I hadn't gotten out. So now I'm gonna see, I've um, got the interior zipper. So now I wanna push and pull the rest of the lining through there. But um, I was like mortified that I was accused of copying something. I was like, are you kidding me? I did not copy anything. And, um, you know, and then finally I, I, I told the lady, I said, you know, first of all, that's not how copyright works. Secondly, I did not copy yours. This was inspired by this pattern and you can go look at it yourself. So then she's like, oh, so you copied her. I'm like, well, no, I didn't copy her. I did not use her PDF. I did not use her um, pattern pieces. I don't even think she has pattern pieces. No, I did not copy her. And in fact, I, and I'm telling this lady this, I, I gave, gave credit to her and referenced people to go and buy her pattern. So lots of people have actually made that decision to go and buy the sewing pattern instead when I've told them. So anyway, but then she's, she ends up blocking me and says, just don't talk to me anymore. I'm like, okay, you're the one who started this. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a cutthroat business. I I just, wow, it's really hard. Okay, now I'm inside there. So now I'm pushing out the corner with my finger and I'm gonna get my hemostats in there. And I'm inside that pocket, and which is allowing me to get full access inside the bag. Do you see how this is so much better than the traditional way we do the bags? Traditionally in the hoop, the bag is all connected down here and you can't really get it because your interior is connected to the exterior all the way around. But by doing this pocket method that I did, and as far as I know, I'm the only one who does it like this. I've done it many patterns since then. Anytime I can do this, I do it. This one's harder because the bag, the pocket gets secured to those side panels. But if you look at um, the flapper, bag cell phone bag that one you can actually pull pocket all the way out all right so we go ahead and see that little um junction there it's all puckery i'm going to reach the zipper or this hemostats in there and carefully i have the rounded edge push that out and make it nice now it's not going to come all the way out like traditional top zippers because we top stitched it that's what happens when you top stitch it you get that little um i don't want to call it a it's like a little pleat I guess you, it is a pleat. Okay, and this side, I'm gonna work that side out. And I have that lining in there. So I'm, I still need to tear the rest of the tear away out. But I could actually get my hemostats all the way inside here um, through that pocket, which you can't really do with um, most in the hoop bags. You can't, it's really hard to get the hemostats inside everywhere. All right, I'm working it out down here, this little corner. Just work the little corners until there is as much as you want. That one's not as good as I want it, but I'm gonna leave it for now. Okay. And I haven't worked with this vinyl a whole lot, so I'm not sure how I don't wanna push through and tear it. Oh, it's holding up. Now what I do along this bottom edge inside, I rub the hemostats along that seam. If you don't have hemostats, use your finger. Rub it along that seam and it helps straighten that seam out. You see that? And the same on the sides. All right. So, and you don't have a hemostat, use your finger. I'm, I'm applying pressure. I'm holding it here and applying pressure with my finger on that seam. Oh, my gosh, you guys. This is adorable. Oh. Then all that's left to do is pull this pocket out 
and it's not easy, but you can, this one's gonna be hard because it's so small, but you can pull it out and then put it together and either um, stitch it under your machine or use glue basting. I'm gonna glue baste it when I'm done here and it's mine's gonna be worse because I cut it too short. So my pocket's only this deep, <laughs> that's okay. And then go ahead and remove the rest of the tear away up here from your, and you might have to cut some little bits from your um, placement lines. Make sure you cut those because if you don't, they could pull some of your stitching out. So go ahead and tear that away. And again, it would have been easier if we'd done that just like we did the bottom one from inside. Okay. Just tear, work it all out. I'm not gonna sit here and do it. You guys can know how to tear away, tear away. Be careful, see the seam there? It wants to kind of tear into my stitching and I don't want that to happen. So just do it very carefully so you don't pull your stitching out. Okay, and then Make yourself a crossbody strap or use a pre-purchased one from New Moon Stitches. So if you haven't gone to New Moon Stitches, I don't have one here sitting here handy to show you. She's got some pre-made um, full vinyl or full leather straps. They're awesome. And she actually just got some wide ones in. So again, so vinyl, let me tell you all the purchasers. Close this guy up here. Vinyl, this is parlor paper from um, um, My Punk Broidery. She's my number one vinyl place. Zippers, rainbow zippers are from camsnaps.com. Comes with these um, little rainbow poles. Should've used the rainbow D-rings from D New Moon, but I didn't, I forgot. And then New Moon, you can get the straps. So this is an adorable little bag right here. And hopefully this video gives more details and made it easier for you to see and I will get it uploaded to YouTube and hopefully I figure out how to edit out my big old snafu when I forgot to put the um, main pocket inside there. Now you see my Decoville did wrinkle through all of that so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to that I said you can do with the Decker bond. I'm going to get my heating my iron heated all the way hot I'm going to put it down on top of my ironing surface really good and push the steam in it and immediately put this on top of it and let it sit for a second. And that will help get those little wrinkles out. This is an adorable bag. How many little girls, I think girls mostly like these um, Shopkins, I think they're called. But, you know, girls don't always just like pink and purple. So when I'm trying to find, um, pick um, the choices for my fabrics, I was like, oh, I'm going to use this blue and because lots of girls like blue. And this is really, really pretty. All right, guys. I hope you like it. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I can start doing Facebook or YouTube lives once I get a 1,000 subscribers. And because it takes forever to upload these videos with um, the other methods. And make, click the little bell to get notifications. And my group is Starfish Designs Embroidery Group on Facebook. And my shop is Starfish Embroidery on Etsy. Thanks, everybody.